Our local flora is diverse, and the stories that go along with these plants are very interesting. Who is Jack, and why is he in the pulpit? What is a wake robin? Why does skunk cabbage stink? Learn the names and colorful stories of some native wildflowers during this video slideshow program. This is also a great way to help you remember the names of some of these wildflowers. Skunk cabbage is one of our earliest blooming wildflowers. As early as January or February, it produces its own heat to melt the frozen ground and snow around it. As the name implies, it produces a skunk-like smell that attracts flies, ants, and slugs for pollination. Jack in the Pulpit is another interesting wildflower. Here you can see Jack sitting inside of his pulpit. This plant is sometimes also called Indian turnip because the root of the plant looks kind of like a turnip. It doesn't hold a typical wildflower shape, but it's still beautiful in its own way. The common blue violet is a beautiful and abundant wildflower throughout the entire state of Illinois. For that reason, it has become the Illinois state flower. There are many stories surrounding the blue violet, many of which go back to the ancient Greeks and Romans. Romans actually used to wear wreaths made out of violets to help prevent hangovers after drinking too much. There are over 10 species of buttercups in Kane County. Here are two of them, swamp buttercup with the shiny petals and cursed buttercup with almost no petals at all. Cursed buttercup is called such because it has a higher toxicity than other buttercups. Forget-me-nots are not native to Illinois. They can typically only be found in the northeast section of the state. They were introduced from Eurasia as an ornamental plant, garden plant. But they are a beautiful plant with many stories behind them that I wanted to share. Wild geranium, sometimes called crane's bill, gets its name from a Greek word that means heron or crane. If you look at the top right hand picture, you can see an example of the seed pods. Notice how they resemble a heron or crane's bill, hence the name crane's bill. We often hear stories of flowers being used in love potions. The wild geranium, however, was actually used to combat those afflicted with love potions. Bloodroot is one of my favorite spring wildflowers. They have short-lived blooms, lasting only a day or two. Each plant consists of only two stems. One stem holds the flower and one stem holds the leaf. The red juices from the stem and roots of this plant can be used to make red, orange, or pink dye. Dutchman's breeches are a fun little flower that look like pants hanging upside down on a clothesline. The flowers are usually white with the yellow tips, but can sometimes be pale pink. The leaves look very fern-like. Queen bumblebees are attracted to the white and yellow and can be seen eating the nectar from the flower. May apples have a long history. It used to be used as a tonic and laxative by Native Americans and European settlers. The effects from the plant were very similar to the mandrake, so Europeans refer to it as the American mandrake. Even though the plant is toxic, the fruit is edible when it is ripe, though it should not be eaten in large quantities. The scientific name for Jacob's Ladder, Polyminium reptans, refers back to King Polyman of Pontus, and reptans, which means creeping, referring to the way the leaves creep over the ground, even though the plant itself does not creep. It has many common names, including Jacob's Ladder, Greek Valerian, and Stairway to Heaven. The trilliums have many different common names. It's always best to refer to the scientific name if you know it. One person's prairie trillium might be another person's red trillium, 
might be another person's nosebleed. Also, the scientific names often refer to different characteristics of the plants, which helps in identifying them. These were just a few of my favorites. Now head outside to see if you can find some of these flowers. If you have any wildflower stories to share, please do so on our social media or you may send us an email. Check our website and Facebook page for more Nature Virtually Everywhere programs.